the national intelligence strategy says that this is going to just get worse over the next 10 years. And I would argue that we're going to have to get a really good strategic plan over the next 20 years to buy down our risk. Because it took us about 30 years to get here. So we're going to have to be really realistic at how we're going to buy down this risk and how we're going to intervene in the marketplace to start to think about getting to more secure and resilient country. So let's talk a little bit about what some of those job opportunities might be. Because I really see this as an opportunity. This is not just IT, although I am going to start with IT. So first, you've got a software engineer, right? You've got a lot of people in here, software engineer, computer science, tech, IT, right? So think about this. It's, we have taught in computer science to get you to code until it works. Certainly how I was taught from a computer science perspective. You're not actually taught any of the engineering principles to make sure that it's actually secure and resilient as well. And this is why we have Patch Tuesday leads to Vulnerable Wednesday, because all of that code, it was functional. It works. But it also has all this other functionality, these vulnerabilities that I can exploit. So what if we actually had software engineers who could actually design us that next generation medical product that's not going to be manipulated over the internet so I don't have to worry about the pacemaker? That's what we need. It's a job opportunity. We need to actually change part of our education system. And all of you guys that are in IT, this is how you need to be thinking about the code that you develop. Second, we need a lot more lawyers who understand this issue. I know that might sound terrible. But when I worked for President Obama, we identified 80, 80 laws that needed to be updated for the digital age. 80 laws. We prioritized the top 23, and only two got passed into legislation or updated, right? So that means there's still 78 laws that at least we identified back then. But now start to think about data protection and data privacy and all of these different things. There's so many aspects of the digital economy and the digital future that we need to have people who understand the law and can translate it and actually advise our corporations of how they need to be thinking about things because the jurisdictions and the extraterritoriality of these laws are quite significant. We have a California privacy law that's going to go into effect on January 1st, 2020, so just a few months away. And it mirrors, in many ways, the European General Data Protection Regulation. And, but what does it add? It's not just your personal identifiable information and those things that all companies must protect. It also has the geolocatable data around you that they have to protect. So think about all of these companies that have been collecting your pattern of life and then you get a coupon as you're walking down aisle two because it knows you walked in the door. That data now has to be protected and they have to get permission to collect it. It's going to be a fundamental shift in how companies have to approach it. And those companies are going to need really good lawyers to teach them how to think about their business. I also need a lot more diplomats. I am an ambassador, I go around the world for the United States of America, and I'm very proud of that. But we need our diplomatic corps to not only understand the trade aspects of this digital economy, but also the conflict and rules of engagement. And oftentimes, we have an economic officer who's dealing with one, and then the political military officer in our embassies is dealing with the other, and never the two shall meet, at least in our country. Unfortunately, every other country is negotiating things as a team and thinking about these things. Our diplomats really need to understand that as we're moving from 20 to 30 to 40 percent of the digital economy is digital, and that a lot of countries are trying to change the way the trade balance is and how our companies are allowed to deliver in the marketplace, that we need to start protecting them. And we need to really start thinking about this in a much more strategic way from a diplom diplomacy perspective. And then we have many countries who are just on the edge of conflict, like Russia, and North Korea, and Iran, and others. And so we really have to understand from a security standpoint, diplomatically, of how we're going to the United Nations, how we're negotiating for our future. And that requires a lot more savvy diplomats in our diplomatic corps, and actually a lot more savvy businessmen, and how they can actually communicate back into our government corps. We are, and we have some uniformed military, thank you for your service to our country and the audience. Um, we do have Cyber Command not too far from here. We have a lot of people in our military that are being trained in this, but we are, and I would argue that we are already in a cyber war. It's just below the threshold of armed conflict, but we are in a day-to-day -day combat zone of where the United States of America's critical infrastructures and services and companies are being attacked and losing a great deal of things. 
And when you destroy core infrastructures, those are significant. Now, some might argue that's just below the, lo the laws of armed conflict, so we're not going to actually go to war with them. But if you're already really in an economic war, how are we going to start to think about different uses of our military and how our military could be used to protect us? These are some of the things that are being grappled with in the policy frameworks and challenges for democratic countries, because the authoritarian countries do not have these discussions. It's all one and the same, one team, one fight, one objective for the country. And we are, are, are really hamstrung by some of the things that make us strong in this particular area of the checks and balances of our government are actually making us weaker against some of our opponents. And we need real leaders. Because who could articulate a national narrative about what's going on? So what does it mean to me? I lost my job. We lost market share. We're losing ground. The dollar is being devalued. There are other things that are happening. And then what can we do about it? We are an innovative country. If we know that there are problems, I think we step up and we solve them. It's that part of that opportunity, these jobs. But we're not t articulating it at a national level of what the challenges are, why this is a national imperative that we all start talking about it at the dinner table, at the water cooler. And we have to think about this because we're in the digital transformation right now right now. And I ask you, are you ready? And I ask this of the companies, are you ready? Are you ready to be commensurate with, as you move down the technology path, are you really willing to actually also invest in the security and resilience of your digital business? Because you have to. You really have to. And we have to become a lot more strategic about what's going on. A lot more strategic because we are being outmaneuvered and outplayed by a lot of countries. A lot of countries we would consider peers. And that's sort of embarrassing, right? So we have to start to think about what does that take? It takes us to develop a lot of different options. Countervailing strategies, a national narrative that talks about the what, the so what, and the now what are we going to do about it as a country for worthy opponents. 